Episode 85, guys, of the Drewcast. Welcome back. Tonight's going to be just a really simple episode, in my opinion. Well, it's not going to be super simple, but uh, this week I turned 30, you know what I mean? In a couple of days. It's going to be about 30 for 30, you know what I mean? But uh, before we start, back with me again, my disembodied, but never bodied voice. We got J.O. Everybody give a clap for him, the imaginary audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're just going to keep pretending that there's an audience here, a live audience. But yeah, I I, I could have done a couple topics today like I usually do. And I think the last couple weeks have been bangers, bro. I've been putting a lot of effort into the last couple weeks with like preparing and getting like the right type of topics. And, you know, the UFO videos have been clean, bro. That was actually pretty, uh, pretty interesting to have to deal with in real time. But but today I wanted to specifically talk about the fact that I am turning 30. I don't think any creator that I've ever watched has ever done something like this. Maybe they have. I don't, I don't remember. But there's a big stigma on the age 30, you know. And there's a big, there's a big, like, ex there's a lot of expectations that come with turning 30. And I kind of wanted to address some of those and kind of document how I feel. So that when I'm an old man, I can look back on this video and be like, damn, you know. And hopefully, like, I can learn from this video, too. Like, maybe when my nephews or my future sons or my future daughters or any of my siblings grow up and they watch this, they can learn from this, you know, and they can learn from like a 30 year old version of me. Right. So, which is crazy. Cause now it's funny. Cause when growing up, you'd hear, you'd hear a lot of women that whenever they get older, they'd always be 33. Remember mom would be like, Oh, I'm 33. It's like, but you were 33, four years ago. And they'd get hella mad. And now I understand because there's so much expectations with becoming 30. Like literally everything's going to change for me in like a couple of days. Any, remember I've been saying this here, but any joke, any joke now, it's like, aren't you 30, bro? <laughs> That's my new dance now, the aren't you 30 dance. <laughs> anytime anybody, literally, anytime I open my mouth to say something smart now, bro, this guy's 30, bro. Like, it's going to be so annoying, dude. It's actually going, and I'm preparing myself mentally for it. I already know it's coming, so bring the 30 jokes, right? But come on, but... Which is funny because I was watching This Is 30 the other day and like, bro, that I, this next 10 years of my life are going to be... I mean, this is 40. Oh, this is 40. Oh, you got me, bro. This is 40. See, my old age is catching up to me. Now, dude. I, I can't remember everything now. Where's my keys? You know, but... No, but, <laughs> but it's, it's actually the... It runs in the family, the retardedness, but... It's... it's um, Then I would say... I'm probably going to look back on this and I'll debate this with myself uh, when I'm older, but the next 10 years are going to be the most important decade. It's going to be the most important decade of my life, bro. I guarantee it. These next 10 years will shape everything going forward, bro. So that's why I'm fucking excited. You know what I mean? Which goes into one of the first things I'm going to talk about tonight. How long will I do this for? And by this, I mean music, podcasting, trying to be an entertainer, trying to build my own brand and my own business and make a fucking future for my family and so yeah this next 10 years will be the most important bro this will shape everything if i because at the end of this decade if i don't have what i think i'm gonna have what happens do we just continue i mean I, we can't are we gonna be 40 still putting out songs with 100 views <laughs> i mean i love music bro and i loved i love being funny and i love doing this but at a certain point, I'm going to have to be real with myself, right? But when when does that point come? It hasn't come yet. It almost happened last year. You know, you know. I, I don't know if I've ever spoke about this story publicly. And if I have, then sorry for repeating it. But last year, Justin had a talk with me. But it was just like, a, hey, we need to get a certain amount of subscribers. Or we might have to change certain things we do, right? That type of talk. And I remember the next like week or two after that, I was like hella depressed. I was like, damn, Justin's right. But at the same time, I'm not the type to give up, bro. Right. We don't give up in this family. You know, like we were raised like we, you when you go outside, you don't come back in until you make a hundred three three point interception. Right. That's kind of like the mentality we had. So we don't give up. And then when that one TikTok video went viral and kind of changed things for me on TikTok. Right. It kind of showed me I was like, hey, this this can work. This is kind of like the beginnings of like this can work. And I, now I just have to retune it. Right. Make make changes and along the way and work harder and grind and try different things. And it's going to work. But not, that's my job to make it work. So how long will I do this for? I hope uh, hopefully I know nothing's forever. OK, but hopefully for a good enough time to where I can 
create something from this that'll be with my family forever. And every and if you're telling yourself that that's not the, what you're dreaming of, I feel like that's the American dream, bro. Like none of us want to work for a corporation forever. No one of us want to do the nine to five shtick and. You know what I mean? Like everybody wants to do something and create something for them and their family. And that's what I'm doing here, bro. So, and it sucks because now that I'm 30, well, I'll be 30 in a couple of days, but let's say I'm talking as if I'm 30 already. Uh, you, you, I look back on the last- You will by the time this comes out. Yeah, I will. So happy. If you're watching Andrew, 30 old Andrew, you're almost 30, bro. What are you, you're 30. What are you doing? But, no, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, if I look back on the last decade, I wasted so much fucking time, bro. What was I doing? You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck was I doing the last decade, bro? So that's why this decade, I can't do that. I can't do the, what was I, bro? Like, literally, the last decade, I can't begin to think of what the fuck was I doing, bro? Like, all the time that I wasted, I can't get that back now. So now, I have two choices. Do I complain that I can't get that time back? Or does this next decade become the most important decade of my life? There's the only two options. Because you can, you don't want to end up like those people who are constantly doing the, the complaining. I'm going to be a waitress forever. You do, that's not true. You have a choice. Everybody has choices. And if that's what you want to be, cool. But like, don't become that, bro. For any family member that's watching, any, like I, like I said in the beginning, any nephew or sibling or future kid that ends up watching this, I'm telling you right now, like, don't become that person that sits there and says, because that's what I'm doing. Now I'm reflecting, right? The last 10 years, I could have been doing this since I was 20. You know, I have been doing music since I was like in middle school, high school. But me and Justin didn't really take this music stuff seriously until about end of high school, after high school, right? Justin, would you say? Was when we started really be like doing good stuff. We were making songs, but they weren't good. It's like 2012, 2013. Yeah, is when we really started doing it. And when you love something... You're right. You're going to get those weeks and months and maybe even years where you're not getting good views. But if you love something, bro, and that's something that you love doing, nothing changes that. Nothing changes. I, I, I could have a video right now on YouTube. That's a rap song, right? It could have a million views. And I could have a song that has 80. You know what that changes for me? Nothing. Because I still love doing it. You know what I mean? I know what I'm worth. I know how good I am. And I don't need, an, I don't need a million view rap song video to show, to tell people that. Right. That's why I can persevere past that stuff. So but it just sucks knowing that, like, yeah, from the time I was 20 till now, I could have been doing so much more to help me into my next phase. That's one thing I'll regret, but that's one thing I'm not going to try to focus on. Right. Because a lot of pressure has been put on my back in the last, I would say, like five years. And a lot of it's self self-inflicted. No one put that pressure on me. I did that myself. So that's something that I'm going to have to learn too, which is fun. It's all fun, dude. You know, and speaking of stuff that I've learned so far, I've learned a lot, bro, in this last like decade. Did I implement what I've learned? Not really. Sometimes I was very lazy and I am very lazy, bro. But I but I don't know where I got that from. Too honest to you, like I could be honest with people right now. I am, I am very lazy, but like I don't know where I got that from. Like I don't know what in my mind made me that way. So an important lesson is for, if you do learn stuff in your early, I would say teens to like your through your 20s. Yeah, do a do a good job of implementing that. You don't want to be 30 and like, damn, bro, what am I going to do for the rest of my life? How am I going to retire? Like how, what am I, you know, like, you don't want that. You don't want that, dude. I mean, there's been plenty of nights where recently too, where I've like said like, damn, bro, maybe I should just quit and go get like a labor job. Right. But I just know that won't make me happy, dude. I know it won't. Like, uh, yeah, you'll like, I remember meeting people who were like, yeah, bro, come fucking, come fucking just lay cement with us while everybody does meth on their break and make $42 an hour. Well, yeah, $42 an hour is good. Right. But like, that's, I don't really want to do that. You know, I don't have nothing against people who do hard work. But I've, I've been made fun of before for doing stuff like this. And amongst our family. You and Justin aren't hard workers. You guys just think you can make money from talking and on your little radio show, which is funny because it's not a radio show. You know how many times we've been, we've been called a radio show? Your little YouTube Bro. Not even in like a disrespectful way either. Some people who just like literally think we're a radio show. Yeah, man, I want to come on your radio show. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, you guys' little radio show. And like, and it kind of baffles me because it's like, bro. Okay, so speaking of like the good and bad that comes with turning 30 and doing stuff like this. I would say the good for me, I feel sometimes like some of the subjects that we talk about is important, right? I do sacrifice a lot of weeks where I could, I could just talk about the latest popular TV show, right? But I feel like I'd be doing a disservice to people who know me in real life, right? Even if you don't believe in like space, right? For instance, when I talk about like the James Webb telescope or aliens or like movies like Prey or Nope and stuff like I that that stuff leads to bigger conversations and I I think that's good. That's good, bro. Not a lot of creators do that. You know, everybody wants to just like hit the gold. Like let's talk about, you know, the the most popular thing out right now. And I sometimes I just can't for a good my for my inner self to do that. Right. A lot of the bad though is and I just mentioned it, we'll have family members who are like your little radio show and they'll tag me in like uh, statuses that make fun of people who rap, you know, like, oh, if you're still tw if you're about to hit 30 and you rap, bro, you got to be and they'll tag me in that no, family members was, will tag uh, me in that, bro. No, it was something about like, we need less rappers and more electricians or some shit. Oh, and they tag me in it. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, and they tag me and I get it. It's a joke, but like, I don't know how to say this without, without sounding complaining, but like a lot of probably, so a lot of content creators probably can relate to that, bro. I know Tim Dillon's one of my favorite comedians ever. He talks about that all the time. Like none of his family takes what he does serious. They make fun of him. It's like, oh, this isn't going to last forever. What do you, and what I realized is these people are just like your friends that you went to high school with, like your family. If they're still in the same spot, Right? They're never going to do anything. They never want to become anything. They don't grind. They don't want something. They don't chase anything. Right, They're going to be mad at you for doing it because you're going to be climbing and they're stuck in the same place. So yes, that w one of the things I've learned is that you can't make everybody happy. Just do what makes you happy and your inner circle ha happy. Because if I try to please every family member and, oh, I won't cuss grandma and I won't, you know, like, oh, mom, yeah, I won't tell the truth. Remember when mom got mad and we told the bike story about our bikes getting stolen? And I said, oh, I thought she did it. Her and Travis did it. And I remember she wrote this long ass comment and I just ignored it. You're not about to sit there and dis, di you're not about to sit there and tell me I can't speak my truth. Sorry. You start your own podcast then and talk about how you didn't sell the bikes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That's fucking and theirs could be the drunk cast or something like just do what Chloe did. Yeah, have you have you seen Clock Cocktails with Chloe? No, bro. I watched one episode and that's all I needed to watch. She has a a thing. Yeah, she has a show on um, I believe it's HBO Max or Hulu. Uh, that's not a podcast then, huh? No, but it's like a show where like they're in a the kitchen and like she invites her friends over and they sit and drink and play games and talk. So it could be a podcast, but not really. It's just mm -hmm. a show where they talk. And I remember yesterday watching it. Well, one, she dead named Bruce Jenner. She was like Bruce Jenner, and I, you know, I thought we were. I thought we weren't dead naming. I thought that's what we. I thought we weren't doing that. Remember, that's one strike one, right? And then she starts. All the girls are like looking at the male cook. We were just wondering when you gonna come out your clothes. Imagine if it was a female cook and it was the reversal, and there was a bunch of male co-stars there. Would that not be creepy? If all the male co-stars were like, we were just trying to see when you come out your clothes, little mama. Like, right? That'd be creepy, right? Strike two. Strike two. And then the whole... And then she's sitting there because she invited some of her black friends. And she, you can tell she's using slang from, like, to impress her black friends. Like, she said, I'm not a Jezebel. Like, oh, yeah, Chloe? You're not a Jezebel, huh? Is that what it... Is that what it... Because, you know... But, yeah, mom could start a show like that. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, start your own show and... and you know what I mean? But you're not in the 1% gang, dude. And once I found out we're in the 1% gang, it changed a lot of my, my thinking. Now I'm like, hey, bro, you got like 20 episodes to catch up consistently. And you got to make good thumbnails and the chapters because Justin introduced us to the chapter making, which is a professional as fuck. I mean, everything about our look is professional. But, you know, going back to the bad, there's a lot of bad, dude. There's a lot of bad. It sucks. It's like... I feel like I'm getting more anxious as I get older, right? So, like, I'll go into my inbox and there's, like, a hey, bro, like, I'll even read it, too. I'm going to read that, dude. Should I put it up, too? Or what? Should I just read it? Like, that'd be fucking hilarious, dude. So, one day, I open up my Instagram and I get a message from this guy right here. Okay. And it's funny because, hey, listen, I wish I was joking, but I get stuff like this all the time and in real life. 
Sky goes, I hope your record label drops you. Okay, one, I don't have a record label. So me and my brother and cousin drop me? That's what he means. I, you know, I think he meant WPOB. So you mean like... But like my brother drops me? you. <laughs> yeah, I'm like one of the leaders of my record label. So yeah, okay. So there's that one. Then he goes, your raps are garbage. You wanna be 50 cent washed up loser. Oh, what, what is that dance I made up earlier? The... <laughs> <laughs> I could out rap you any day. Stop flexing that you got a career. Once I get traction, I can end you in three bars and take your record deal, Hotshot. So but this guy sounds like he's in a John Wayne movie. Like, you know, with the cowboy and like. Yeah, the- no, I think I told you this, but like, if you're born after like 1990 and you say Hotshot, you're done, bro. That's hell. He says, fuck around and find out, bitch and a half. Wow, I'm a bit. I'm not even two bitches. I'm a bitch and just a half of a bitch. Well, thank you for not calling me two bitches because I've been kind of rude, actually. I've been really fucking rude. But what made me hell a laugh, he said, I can end you in three bars. So I kept coming up with, like, scenarios where he could. And he was like, hey, yo, 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 you listen here, Mellow. I'll make your girl shake like Jello." You know, like, uh, <laughs> and if I see you in public, it's not going to be a hello. Like, you know, like, it's like this. I can just imagine this, like, the whack ass bars that end me. Hey, comment below. If you can end me in three bars, I'll stop rapping. And that's an invitation to anybody who's a rapper right now. You come up with three fucking bars to end me. If you can do it, I will literally stop rapping. You guys can get your wish, dude. No more weird DMs where you're in my DMs talking about like, bro, you're trash. And can I get on your podcast though, bro? But you're also trash. Just say you want to come on my podcast, whoever this is. You don't got to do all that, dude. You see this? You don't got to do that, dog. Just say you want to come on. You had a better chance before. Now it's, I can end you in three bars. So now this is my invitation to anybody who can rap. If you can end me in three bars, they know snap me. I'll go away. I'll go away. But until then, I'm going to keep rapping, dog, because none of you are ending me in three bars. And I feel like I'm about to have a heart attack because my heart is like, like maybe I'm getting to, uh, it's the old age, bro. Catch so up yeah, with it's me. It's the 30, the 30 in you. Yeah, it's the 30 in me, man. So maybe we got to calm down a little, drink some water, <laughs> some ginger ale, I don't know. But, uh, but uh, you know, before I get off the bad, okay, there's a lot of bad, by the way, and there's, it's going to probably only get worse for me. Because a lot of it comes from family too, man. And I'm sorry, but like they they want to talk hella shit and be hella shady and sneaky behind the scenes. But when I speak about it publicly on my platform that I work hard for, I can't do that now. No, bro. So here's the thing. From now on, I'm going to be more transparent with my fan, with our subscribers and fans and people who just fuck with me. And I'm not holding back no more. So if you have the balls to be sneaky and fuck boyish, fuck boyish behind the scenes, I'm going to start talking about it freely. And I'm I'm just going to start saying like, hey, guess what happened last week? Type shit. Guess who was in my DM saying like, I, you know, what? it's hella funny because then people make excuses too. Like I, I had a, I, I, I don't want to say I used to have a grandma because she's still alive, but I had a grandma one time who like sent me this message of clowning the fuck out of me and Justin's music. But she supposedly was supposed to send it to her other friends, right? And now I probably, she's a boomer, right? So now I probably believe that it probably was for her other friends, but she accidentally sent it to us. But how convenient. How convenient that that message is like, they're nasty. And- mm, I don't know. I don't know how you could be that fucking stupid to like not notice you were sending it to the person you're talking about. But Yeah, I know. At me. the time I said that, I was like, damn, there's no way you didn't know. You sent yeah, that to me like- knowing that I would see that. Oh, sorry. Don't read that. Sent that to my friend. Yeah. There's no fucking way you didn't see that blood. There's no way that you did not see that. I guess you'd be surprised though. Who knows? You know, most people have like really good relationships like their, with their grandparents and stuff. Not me. My grandma sends me messages bad mouthing the fuck out of what I want to do with my life. I don't hurt her. I don't hurt anybody else in this family. I don't fucking sit there and and do. I don't play the politics like they do because everybody loves to play the politics. And I'm in the middle and I'm in the you can't be in the middle when there's someone like, you know what I mean? Like, let's say you have a fucking um, two really bad people. You can't be in the middle, bro. Like, or like, it, it, that's kind of what I want to work on too as, as I'm getting older. There is no being in the middle, okay? Right? Like, let's say, for instance, Justin, I know this is, this is probably not even ever going to happen, but let's say I had a daughter, your daughter, right? Like, I can't be in the middle of like if she gets married and her husband beats her. 
well, I can't take sides, sweetie. I just can't take sides. No, bro, the, you got to take a side. So, again, but I mean, imagine like you, you, you trying to have like a good relationship with grandma. I meant to send it to my other friends. So you're talking about us like that to your friends? What? That's even worse. You, who, what friends of yours do you have that would even be cool with you talking about your grandsons like that? Who, Ethel down the road? I know she ain't get on Facebook. You know what I mean? Yeah. What friends? They're all old. You message your old ass friends like that? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that is a wild ass concept. <laughs> yeah, bro. Oh, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, like I was just with, you know, I was just with her the other day at lunch and she was talking shit about her grandkid. Like Bethel yeah. or Beth or something. I kept like, I'm just trying to rhyme names, but like imagine old Beth just comes to brunch at Sherry's one day. That Sherry's getting pancakes and stuff. And then grandma's popping off about how her grandson's rap. And, uh, you know, I guarantee you they said they said some pretty racist shit about it, dude. I get, you know what I mean? You know, like when, like, they do the the black music. You know, I, I bet they looked around, too, and made sure nobody heard them say that. Right? It's fucking ridiculous, dude. But, you know, I got to move on from that type of stuff. But at the same time, I'm going to be transparent. And when I, for future episodes, all fucking, all bets off the table, bro. Th this decade is the most important decade of my life. This changes everything for my family. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to be dramatic, but at some point I said there has to be that talk, right? There has to be the, we're in the moment. We're not realizing it right now because me and you are in it, but we're going to look back on this. I'm like, yeah, bro, that, that window of years was the most important we've ever had. And we're going to, you know what I mean? Like I said, if you're mad about me talking about certain stuff, you make your own goddamn podcast and you fucking respond to it. If not, don't tell me how to speak my truth and don't tell me that I can't speak my truth. When you've done nothing to better this situation. The, uh, me and Justin don't have... We, we don't have a fucking backbone. We have a backbone, sorry. We don't have a fallback, right? Me and Justin don't have... Uh, we have back, right? That's kind of bad. We're fucking cowards, you know? I mean? <laughs> <laughs> me and Justin are bitches, but... <laughs> we don't have a, a fallback, bro. We don't have rich-ass money to fall back on. This is us. That's why I'm so proud of what we do. This is us. No one else. This is fucking us, bro. We don't get help. We don't get... We do get people who congratulate us. So that's not... I don't want to lie and say that nobody fucks with us. There is. Right? But that's it. This is me and Justin, bro. We built this and we're the ones... Key, we're the ones steering this goddamn boat to where we need to go. So at the end of the day, I only got to listen to what... Like if Justin said, hey, bro, I wouldn't talk about that on today's episode. I have to take that into consideration because not only is he my brother... Right, one of the only family members I really actually fuck with, but he's my business partner too with that stuff. So if Justin says, "Hey, I don't think we should," okay, I'll take that into real consideration. But everybody else, start your own show. And speaking of, okay, I want to talk about stereotypes. The stereotype of turning thirty, like you're too old. No, you're still young. You're still young, dude. So yeah, I'm gonna be getting jokes like you're thirty, bro, and yeah, you're immature for thirty. Yeah, okay, maybe I am, but I'm not every human. And I'm not everybody who's ever lived and I'm not, nobody's the same, right? And I don't have to listen to what you think a 30-year-old should do. Maybe in your head, that's what a 30-year-old 30, 30 should be. But that's not what a 30-year-old is to me. Isn't the dude who, uh, like, partners with Logan Paul or whatever, the dude who dated Lana Rhodes, isn't he like 36? Is he? 37, 38. I think he's like 38. The guy who does the impulsive podcast with Logan. Yeah. I mean, that's and good. like he just got famous like not even a couple years ago. So I feel like there's there's I feel like the 40 is like the new 30, dude. Yeah, it is. And this again, this will be the most important decade. It, it will. And I'm just telling you, we will look back on this time and you're like, yeah, Drew, you were hella right, bro. And I will be right. Not you were hella right. I will be hella right. You know, now I understand why older women are like, I'm 33. And it's like, you're not. You're 50, Becca. But thank you for lying. You know, I mean, it's cool. But now I understand why they lie. I don't want to be old. I don't want... It's cool when the kids do it. Like, you know, if Avery's like, Uncle, you're old. I know, it's cool, right? It's, it's sweet, you know? She doesn't understand, but it's sweet. It's fucking funny if my nieces and nephews do it. But, like, if you're, like... Everybody's always looking down, too. Like, I remember there's been hella times... I'll, and I won't say names, but I'll go to lunch with family members or... or or let's say, for instance, in-laws or whatever. And my and my mother-in-law is fucking sweet and fantastic. But I'm not talking about her when I... But, like, people will be like, oh, you're a little... You're a little... Like, it's always, like, a little. Like, everybody's always talking down and looking down on you and, you know. And the reason I'm focusing so much on this particular day is because, like I said in the beginning, 
not a lot of creators focus on the 30. This is me documenting it for myself when I'm older, but also for other members of my family who, hey, I'm about to be, I'm feeling old, bro. Let me turn this on and kind of laugh with Andrew. You know, I want everybody to laugh. And if I can't, I, that's kind of like, I don't know. I think I told you guys my biggest dream would either to be trolling someone into killing me or becoming the entertainer I'm meant to be. And, and we just got to make everybody laugh, bro. Everybody, even the blue hairs from Portland, they got to laugh too. I'm so sick of them not laughing. What do we got to do to get the liberal people to start laughing, dude? Honestly, like Jennifer Lawrence is like, if you say you're not political, then I can't fuck with you. Like, <laughs> and politics are killing people. Well, if politics are killing people, you wouldn't want them to be more pol political, right? Because I um, mean, if they're killing people. Well, she said that if you if you say you're not political, she doesn't fuck with yeah, that. Yeah, it was reported in Variety yesterday. I'll, I'll show you after we're done. And I can put well, it on the internet, but... She says she doesn't fuck with you, and it's because politics are killing people, so you can't say you're not political, right? But if you want more people to be political, and pol politics are killing people, it just... Sorry, yeah, it's that not does a, sound it's like not a kind a, of a double-edged sword there. It's not a good look, but... but we got, yeah, I mean, dude, I... That's kind of... The, the importance of today, or when I turn 30, which is, I think is this Saturday, which sucks, I'm probably gonna have to work, so imagine, you know, how may I help you today? I'm 30. <laughs> 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 you know, like that type of shit, but... So the reason this show in particular, and like, and just off the music stuff, but the podcast in general, why it's so important to me, it's important because I feel like making people laugh, entertaining people, but you're getting a real person, bro. You're not getting a Hollywood type shit. You're not getting corporate. You're not getting a corporation behind me. It's literally just me and Justin. That's what you're fucking getting when you get this show. That I try so hard every week to make you proud, the watcher. Whoever fucking supports me and you actually enjoy what I do, that this is for you, bro. You're not getting a corporation behind me. This is literally all me and Justin. Besides the beats that we get from other people, the rap, we make our own raps. We write our own raps. We edit our own videos. This is all us. We are self-created, self-made people, bro. You're getting a real person. Not like a script where I can't talk about this today because the liberals and the Dem and the Republicans might get mad. No. You're getting 100% me right now. And that's why I think it's important for this show to do good in the next decade. Because you're going to get someone who is going against what the mainstream is telling you or, you know, you're getting banned for this and banned for that and free speech isn't allowed here. Nah, bro. We're the fucking, we're the freedom writers, dog. You know what I mean? And the, and it's important. It's important to get your mind expanded and it's important to have somebody think about it, bro. Why would I come here every week and lie and this and and be and be political BS and like why and do the whole the politically correct answer for everything? Like sometimes I'm gonna slip. Sometimes I'll say retarded, or sometimes I might slip and say other words, bro. But at the end of the day, like. You're getting me. And that should matter in today's climate. With all the fake fucking people who are like with their makeup and the, not the makeup, the people who get their uh, their makeup team and their hair team and their script. Okay, well, you're going to have to say this and this today. Not with me, bro. You know what I mean? I don't even remember. I don't even remember if I um properly brushed my hair before this video. But it doesn't fucking matter. Because I still look good. <laughs> <You know what laughs> I mean? but, but yeah, and then... You know, uh, and the show's also important because I'm not just doing this for me, bro. I know people get annoyed when I say that, but it's it's not just for me, bro. I got kids looking up to me. We have to do something for them. No one did this shit for us. Where was our parents doing some shit like this for us to better set our fucking future? They weren't doing that, right? Nobody was caring about that. Everybody was like uh, fucking stealing and borrowing money from people and causing drama when we were kids, right? So that's not happening with us. That's why it's important to me. Because I'm going to end off with this topic. Will I ever have kids? Yeah, And I hope I do. I hope I do have kids because I want to give the next generation something to, to for them to fight for. That's it. I want to give Justin's kids and my kids and all the kids in this family, the future of this family, the right blueprint for their lives. Because no one did that shit for us, bro. No one gave us the right blueprint. It was all just hush hush and but under the rug and you know what I mean and oh uh, you know and, and and I'm not gonna get too personal but I mean at, at the end of the day, this is who we are fighting for. Anytime I do a review or I try to make a joke or we do a video or music, 
it's it is for the next generation we're trying to inspire these kids we're trying to we're they need to have a future and they will have a future because the people that who are their elders are going to make sure those kids have the right tools and the blueprint to succeed and that's why this show is important to me because it it just ties into everything that I have visioned for this family. I'm not thinking about, oh yeah, I know I did put an importance on the next decade, but I'm not thinking about just the next decade. I'm talking about up until I'm like 90 or 80 and I'm ready to hand over the reins to either my kids or Justin's kids. This is all for you. We, this was built for you. You learned, you grow, and you take over what we did and you, you become better than us. Don't you think it's weird when like some parents or family members don't want the kids to be better? Like when I was a, I used to be, I used to want to be an actress till I had, until I gave birth to you. Now I'm just stuck at Sherry's all uh, the rest of my life. You know what I mean? It's like, not me, bro. I hope Noah is better than me and you. I hope he's a, if he wants to rap, cool. I hope he's a better rapper than me and you. I hope he's a better football player than me and you. I hope my son and daughter are better than me. You would want that for, you know what I'm saying? And the people mm -hmm. are not like that nowadays, bro. People are like, oh, well, I, I wanted to be an astronaut till I had your little dumbass. <laughs> You know, and it's like, it's all fun and games until like those kids are like sponges, bro. And they will see and hear you say that. And it's like, uh, not a good look, dude. It is not one. You know, like th at the end of the day, bro, my, I just, I just want to pass something on to the future of this family that we could be proud of. And I'm proud of the stuff we do. I'm proud of uh, turning 30 and realizing like there's a lot of stuff that I could have done. And there's a lot of stuff that I'm going to do. And I can't focus on what I should have done because that stuff doesn't matter anymore. I have things I need to do now. And looking back on this video when I'm older, I'll probably I will probably watch this and be like, damn, bro, you're right. Don't think about what you could have done when you were 20 to 30. Think about now. The now is the most important. Everything you do going forward will change everything. And it's going to change everything. You just have to understand that everybody's not for you. And everybody's not against you. But definitely everybody's not for you. And you can't please everybody. You can't. It's physically impossible. Every There's so many people in this family and, and friends and real life who just who want to see you fail. But you have to rise above that. And you know what I mean? At the end of the day, I'm, I'm very proud of turning 30. I'm, I'm already preparing for the jokes and everything. You know, the whole, you're 30, bro. But that is my 30 for 30, guys. Thank you for joining me. I wanted to make it 30 minutes, so it could be a 30-minute video, but daddy ran over time. So, uh, what did he say uh, in Aladdin when Jack Nicholson was like, uh, you're, a foot, you're a street shooter, man. <laughs> what did he, he said something like that. And I don't know why I'm saying it now, but just whatever, dude. But yeah, thank you for joining me on my 30 for 30, guys. Until next time, peace.